It's gonna place down my up. What the? F <laughs> I think I've done a pretty good job at getting my stars here. Probably time for me to move through. And as per usual in Humankind game, particularly on max difficulty, the Greats, the Mayans, the Huns, the Celts, and the Greeks taken from me. So, for this video I wanted to discuss what do you do in Humankind when you don't get your first choice? Because it happens to me a lot on stream and off stream as you can see here. Let's talk playing bad cultures, playing off meta cultures. How do we decide on them? And how do we make the most of them? Because probably we've all come across this at one point or another. Sit back and get comfy. My name's Jumbo Pixel. Let's jump into Humankind game. So a little bit of context for you. Uh, if you didn't see my video yesterday, I have a fairly good start in a beautiful region here. You can see I got the Egyptians, which was nice. Get rid of that. Uh, a few things here and there, a couple of pyramids, blah, blah, blah. It's fantastic. I've got this wonderful productive empire. Unfortunately though, as I said at the start of the video, I don't have the decision of which culture I really want to play. So how do you make decisions? That'll be the first part of this video. And then second, and the body of the video will be actually playing it out in practice. Let's have a bit of fun with it. So I've got the Romans, the Persians, we won't even discuss them, the Goths, the Carthaginians, and tempted to even not discuss you. So when I'm going through and picking from basically the leftovers, right? These are, in this case, the runts of the litter. How do I make that decision? Firstly, I'm looking at who I've already played and what I've got. And this goes, by the way, whether you're in the second era or the sixth, it doesn't matter. So I played as the Egyptians and industry was my thing. And really that was it. I've got a couple of wonders worth remembering, but otherwise I think that my specialization here in this case is literally just industry. So I have two options now that I'm moving through. Do I want to stick with that and try and really focus in on it? Or do I want to cover my blanks? For me, my blanks are really money and science as well as food, but particularly money and science are the two that I'm most interested in. So I'm going to try and pursue those. The other thing to remember is stability. Because I played as the Egyptians, I've built a lot of districts, naturally, right? My maker's quarters are so good. Let's have a look inside of Memphis here. You can see they are absolutely fantastic, but stability is not something that's on my side. So I'm also kind of interested in picking up on that to try and cover the weaknesses from the first era. So who am I going to choose? Well, I could get plus two money on tiles here, and then kind of a religion-y thing. Not for me. Gonna put them aside. Carthaginians. I don't have a lot of coastline, so I don't have a lot of opportunity to build these wonderful harbors. They are fantastic, but maybe not for me. Okay, who's next then? The Goths. Military strength, bit of influence on garrisons. Influence and faith, and a great unit. So if I was maybe feeling a little bit fighty, I could take them. But this time I'm not, actually. I'm looking for more of a SimCity kind of run. Um, plus one influence on emblematic districts, influence, faith, and science. Honestly, not mad at this, actually. Next we have the Persians. And then finally, we have the Romans. And it's actually these two who I'm most interested in. As luck would have it, they happen to be expansionist cultures, which is what it is. We'll talk about that later. But really here, it's basically a trade-off for me. Do I want to get influence and stability and a great unit, but with a slightly more militarist focus? Or do I want to take an expansionist like the Persians and go for a more sort of peaceful building up money and influence? That's what I want to do, supported by a really powerful immortal. So I'm going to grab the Persians. A little bit off meta, but the plus two city cap is fantastic and 10 stability on all of my cities and outposts. Can't complain, plus a satrap's palace. That's going to give me a little bit of influence and money, which as you might remember, are two other things that I really wanted to get a hold of. So let's do the Persians. One of the reasons why I was more happy to take an expansionist culture this time is because in my first era, I focused a lot on building up Memphis and to a lesser extent my second city Thebes. I focused a lot on building their industry and not a lot on expanding. As you can see, look at this. There is still world to fill in. This is unlike me. Those who watch my live streams will know that I tend to be a bit of an aggressive land grabber. So picking up an expansionist culture is actually potentially quite beneficial here for me. It's gonna place down my up, what the? <laughs> Plus 35 industry on this basic biatch outpost. Good God. That's the power, by the way, 
of combining the Egyptians with this. Abstain from intoxicants. I know people rip on religion a lot in humankind, but these followers' beliefs are actually absurd. Plus two industry on forest and woodland. Whew. Honestly, don't sleep on religion. Even if you're not playing a, a, a highly industrial game like I have in this one, do not sleep on religion. Another thing that I should note here as well, if you're curious, this is called a trade post. And basically what's happening is it's an unclaimed territory, but people are trading through it. And so the game establishes this trade post thing. Usually it's a good spot for a, a, an outpost. So I'm also pretty excited about this building, Satrap's Palace. I've started with the Egyptians, so I've got industry on my side. It means I can build these quickly. What does it do? Well, it's going to give me influence to help me grow and expand, right? Really important for an expansionist culture. But also it looks like it's giving me a bit of money and it seems to have uh, an interesting interaction with gemstone and market quarters. Mm, worth bearing in mind. Honestly, this isn't bad. 15 money a turn and nine influence. You can see up the top right, those two resources are two things that I'm doing okay for, but not brilliantly. So like I say, we're gonna fill in the blanks. That should, yeah, fine, I'll allow it. I was gonna say that should be a maker's quarter. I'm just also checking for like adjacencies and that kind of thing, but this looks fine. So I'll smash those out. That'll help my influence in gold. And then hopefully we can just snowball and really, really push out a wonderful city here. I'm tempted actually to get a couple of market districts around these resources as well just to boost my gold that little bit more. So I'm gonna do that. Plus one science per number of trade routes seems like a super powerful civic for me to pick up. Not one I would usually choose, but honestly, pretty damn good. And because I don't need the city cap from small council, I'm gonna do something a little bit odd and choose the 25 stability here. Now it's worth noting that every time you buy a civic, the next ones become more expensive. So you shouldn't just splash cash like I have here all the time. But I do need some stability. It would be nice to increase our influence gain, right? As if, if you don't know, if you're at that 90% stability point, you get more influence, twice as much from your population. So pretty keen to work toward that too. Oh my goodness. I was coming over here to claim this territory <laughs> and this independent tribe of Scythian Neapolis decided to settle this city right next door to me and then they've walked their troops out in classic style. So now I'm just going to walk in here and hoover up this city, which is great for me as the Persians because I have that plus two city cap for the rest of the game and it's really, really important that you make the most of it, right? Have a look at these freaking yields for starters. Firstly, I've got this event on what we should do with the bodies that we left behind. Huge yikes. Let's discard them. But crucially, look at these yields, right? All of this influence and faith and science has just been added to my empire and my city cap is massive, so I don't even care. How good. I'm gonna call this city Goldolopolopolop. <laughs> I've ruined it and I can't be bothered fixing it. And I'm gonna splash a bit of cash to get my unique districts. I reckon that's probably worthwhile. Bit of infrastructure never hurt nobody either. This horse is one. At the moment, I have three horses and four copper connected to my empire through trade and through my own territories. So the infrastructure here, Animal Barns, is going to provide plus 20 food to the city. It's pretty good and probably better than building farmers' quarters and losing stability. Likewise, the forge, plus five industry per copper. At the moment, I have four. Incredible. Let's grab both of these. Oh, I don't super love the fact that this territory has just appeared. It might actually be time to start doing some expansionizing. Let's queue up a couple of military units. Some money on market court is really good for me too. Let's get our unique Egyptian ones. See what we can do. I guess also actually one of the downsides here is that we don't have a lot of food. <laughs> like we really don't have much food. <laughs> We're pretty hungry. Maybe then for the next era, I try and fill in that food blank by choosing a foodie culture. If I can actually manage to get it before the AI beats me to it. <laughs> So this territory is going to connect another horse and another copper, which is not only going to give me some builder stars, but crucially also improve all of those infrastructures, right? So now that infrastructure that we looked at before will provide plus 25 industry to a city. Speaking of cities, the city of Thebes would love to hoover up that territory under its control. Absolutely brilliant. You can almost even get some fun adjacency bonuses going on here. Hmm. I only have one unit and it's just a warrior, but if I have a look at red, their capital's over here 
and moving through these territories isn't impossible, but it's the movement is somewhat restricted. I'm also quite influential over these guys, so let's splash a bit of cash and influence at them. This could potentially be my fourth city. I'm particularly interested in taking this one because they're an aggressive independent tribe, right? They're not the peaceful ones, so they're going to be a pain in the ass. So let's try and take them. Let's also have a little experiment. Screw it. Let's buy these units, keep them around nearby to support this one unit, which is going to use our expansionist ability. So if I click this and click this territory, right, 50 money in four turns. That isn't terrible. So I'll just muck around and wait for 50 money to roll through. In fact, it'll roll through literally as I change this turn. And what we'll do is we'll click this little button on this unit. You can see here, 50 bucks. It'll march over and ransack the territory, but it's better than that normal ransack action that we could do because of course it will actually steal it for ourselves, right? It's not just going to burn it down. It's actually just going to convert it to me. 50 bucks is pretty good. Here you can see they've got some units who will probably come and be really annoying to try and intercept me. So what I'm going to try and do is I can't rent these ones because they're defending that city. That's annoying. But if we position ourselves in a reasonable high ground position like this, we might be able to intercept these units as they make their way over to this territory that we're trying to steal. Actually, kind of not mad at sending this guy up here as well. Let's do it. We're researching iron at the moment, but I think we're going to be a bit late to it. Oh, I don't know. I'd love to have iron right now. Ah, no. So what's happened here is they've turned it into a city. Uh, and that's, stop that's actually really clever. I didn't know the AI would do that. They've converted it into a city. But they've actually left the city entirely undefended. It's unfortunate because it means that we're going to have to go to war now to take it, whereas before we wouldn't have. However, I've only bought two luxuries off them. I think I will fight ship. I think I will declare this war, actually. So let's go. Do -do 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 Relations. Surprise. We're at war. Sorry, Greeks. And literally just jump in and take that city. It's hilariously entirely undefended. So we can literally just hoover it up. This unit. I'd like to attack as well, but I'm not sure which way it's going, so we'll just monitor it. Taking a city by force unlocks this cultural blessing civic, which is super good to boost your early game influence. Although as I look at this, plus one, plus one, 272, plus five stability. Mm, tempting, but I'll, I'll go the, I'll go multiculturalism. Give me all that influence. That's brilliant. They ran away, but they do have, oh, okay, right, I see you. I see you. Let's merge these armies together. And then we're one turn away from unlocking iron. So what I might do is just sort of rest on my laurels here a bit. Move off that river. So if I need to fight this guy, which we're going to do right now, manually resolve quickly before their reinforcements can come over. And I'll fight this battle manually uh, because it is a dang good one. I'm going to lose the high ground, but all the rest of the terrain kind of sucks because it's rivers everywhere. So let's just move into this forest. Yeah, we'll go for a cheeky charge with our chariot. The chariots are so good that I don't actually mind taking the low ground here. Look at that. The combat difference is absurd. These chariots, honestly, man, they are so much fun. Thank you, mercenaries. Absolutely worth the 100 gold I spent to hire them. Oh, and as luck would have it, this territory here has some iron I can connect with my influence. Brilliant. Let's immediately hoover up all of these resources. Boom, boom, boom. And probably because I'm an expansionist, I'd quite like to connect this territory. Let's connect it to Goldilopolis, which is yet to have anything connected to it. Brilliant. It'll hurt its stability a bit, but we're working on it. We're working on it. Now that I've got iron, these boys can pick up some proper swords. Let's send them in. Seeing as we are still technically at war, we may as well march in with a few troops. We can't combine these armies because these ones are technically mercenaries, which is kind of annoying. But I'll just sort of use them as like fodder basically <laughs> uh, six turns sure we'll use these mercenaries to ransack one of their tiles effectively getting our money back from hiring them in the first place army composition is great to give us that plus one combat strength uh, particularly on max difficulty humankind difficulty you kind of need to take your wins where you can get them now these troops were just mercenaries so i don't mind losing them but obviously ideally i would like to protect them so let's see if we can at least take down some of these guys in the process. What are we versing? Seven warriors. Okay. They are taking big hits because like I say, chariots, OP, 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 OP. 
Honestly, the chariots are so powerful. Look at that. Literally, they're dealing like six damage to me. I love, oh, that one was a bit harder, but I love these chariots so much. What I'm gonna do is attack one in there and one in there. That's gonna weaken those units and maybe, oh, I can get up on this fort. Wait, let's get the spearman back to just holding the flag because this is too much of a vulnerable position. Although I would love to be up on this high ground actually. So let's move up there. <laughs> it's given us much better visibility of the battlefield as well, which is always nice. Sacrificial chariot. I might not take the flag because I don't technically mind that so much. <laughs> let's check back in with old chariots, see how they're doing. Oh, look, they fought a really good fight. Like they took out quite a few units. Absolutely worth spending a hundred bucks on them, I think. Let's just defend and hold this hill. Uh, they've got my flag, so they will technically win this battle, which is a shame for my war support, but otherwise not the end of the world. Let's just stab in, make the most of these last rounds. Do a bit of damage while we're here with our effectively free units. Not bad. Like I say, lost the war score, but took out five of their units in the process, paving the way for potentially my own warriors to come through and cause a bit of wuckus. Actually, let's use our expansionist thing on this one. Boom. Brilliant. Six turns. Let's take it and let's send the mercenaries up with it if we can. Can I actually buy the city? Not quite. Okay. If I can get that city online, we might really be able to do something stupid here. Might need to move towards imperial power, uh, which is great for two reasons. Firstly, it'll give me the commons quarter and secondly, it'll put us a nice line to get feudalism next era. Okay, so their troops have rocked up next to mine who are currently using their expansionist ability to try and take this northern territory right out from under Babylon's nose. The annoying thing is, I don't have the influence to hoover up the city yet, so I'm just gonna save as much of my influence as possible. Oh, and those units that I was building ages ago are ready. I, to be honest, completely forgot about them. But the good news is there are mounted units from when we were the Egyptians, so they're gonna be pretty quick. So let's just race them over. Three turns to get that far is pretty good. A wonder can be claimed, and the mausoleum of Heliconassus with plus two science per district on city or outpost is amazing. But I actually want to save up and buy this city because it's of strategic importance. Oh my goodness, it's so expensive though. Maybe we just take it by force instead. Okay, so fast forward a few, and it looks like this turn we just took this territory for our own. So we've literally just taken a part of Babylon. Like, <laughs> when I talked the other day about the expansionist abilities being like kind of good and fun and now that they're cheaper, actually really usable, I was serious. Like we just literally just took that. It makes me wonder actually that we could just win this fight altogether. The fact that they didn't challenge me makes me think we could. However, as I say, this city here is of strategic importance, but it's just too expensive to buy with influence. And so I think sometimes as humankind players, we have to be willing to accept, you know, oh, that, was a, that was a sunk cost. I spent money on these guys and unfortunately it's just not gonna pay off. I should just accept that I think and take the city. So let's just assault it and redeploy these chariots who of course cannot cross the wall, but they can actually shoot because they're a ranged unit. So that's great. This front line over here is pretty messy. We've got bad conditions and bad terrain. Uh, what that means is I'm probably going to try and hoon through with my chariot uh, and maybe even just distract and just end round and defend with basically all of these units. Okay, the peasants who are defending aren't great, particularly these ones here. Those are peasants, those are archers, and then these are levies, right? But I think we can win this, particularly now that a gap has opened up here behind their walls, right? Now, now this is this is really where the money is made. The key here, by the way, also, I just want to highlight, it's worth fighting these fights for this. The timing of that was un uncanny. Era stars, military era stars. Don't forget about your military era stars. Even if you're not playing a militarist game, it doesn't hurt to at least skirmish with some free peoples, right? Some independent tribes. That way you don't even need to technically declare war and you can get fame for free, essentially. Definitely worth doing, particularly if you've got troops standing around doing nothing costing you money. Splashed a whole load of cash here in the city I've just hoovered up to try and give it that vital infrastructure just to lift up its food and industry almost immediately without costing any stability. Very strong. Let's get some of our immortals and hoover up this territory and oh, potentially even that one. Thebes needs to grow. 
I'm just thinking we must be close to winning this war because we haven't lost much. Oh, both sides are getting pretty weary of the fighting. Okay, what we're gonna have to do here then is just try and get a, a couple, a, a victory essentially to try and win this, this war so that we don't lose literally everything we've just worked on building up. But we might have to wait till next time for that one. Thank you very much for joining me in this video, which was originally going to be a video, sort of a, a flexible creative piece by me about choosing bad cultures or not as good and, and how you play them. And I hope that you picked up some things like that from watching me today. If you enjoy this kind of format, this sort of episodic format, I'd be happy to pursue it in future. And until next time, everybody, I'll see you then. Do let me know in the comments, by the way. Bye-bye.